We're less than six weeks away from the release of Marvel Studios' Black Panther, and Toys R Us's super fancy website for the film just released some new character bios. I'm Jason Inman. Let's take a look at these character bios and break them down. First up is Black Panther, T'Challa, played by Chadwick Boseman. It says, As the new king of Wakanda, T'Challa is struggling to cope with the loss of his father T'Chaka, but is determined to live up to his great legacy. When Wakanda finds herself beset by two enemies intent on the nation's downfall, Black Panther must use his new suit and heightened strength, speed, and senses to defend Wakanda and the rest of the world. Of course, this description references the death of Chichaka in Civil War, and it also mentions two enemies, which I'm going to assume are Killmonger and Claw. Now, it also mentions that Black Panther will have a new suit, which of course every Marvel superhero has to have a new suit, or every superhero has to have a new suit with every new movie, because we've got to sell action figures with every new movie. Next up is Okoye played by Danae Guerrera, the head of the Dora Milaje, an all-female special forces group. Okoye is a fiercely loyal protector of Wakanda who isn't afraid to question her king, but would defend him with her life. A staunch traditionalist who is as formidable with her spear as she is with her tongue, Okoye finds herself torn between her allegiance to her country and her king when T'Challa begins to challenge ancient Wakandan rules. Now, the Dora Milaje are an order of wives in training for the king of Wakanda, who also serve as his personal valets and bodyguards. In the comics, each member of the Dora Milaje was chosen from a different tribe of the Wakandans, and it's a political tradition to ensure peace among the tribes as each held a role in the palace and a chance to become the next queen. Now, if you want, in the next video, let me know, and maybe I'll do a full video about the door of the Milaje because there's a lot to them. Also, fun fact, this is the exact same bodyguard that T'Challa had from Civil War, so it's nice to see this actress getting to play the same character in two movies. Next is Nakia, played by Lupita Nyong'a, a Wakandan spy pulled from her mission abroad by her former flame T'Challa, Nakia consistently gets involved in conflict for the good of others, adamant to use her abilities to help those in need. In the wake of King T'Chaka's death and the rise of Wakanda's new enemies, Nakia puts her skills of subterfuge and hand-to-hand -hand combat to use in order to fight alongside Black Panther. Now, in the comics, Nakia is also a member of the Dora Milaje. See, I told you there was a lot to him. And in the comic book, she's also quite infatuated with T'Challa, which could play a lot into the movie. And this could possibly be T'Challa's romance subplot for his movie. Next up is Shuri, played by Latiti Wright. Shuri is T'Challa's younger sister and head of the Wakandan Design Group, where she designs and builds futuristic tech such as the Black Panther suit with vibranium mined from the Great Mound. She is an innovator, intelligent behind her years, and always ready to give her bigger brother a hard time. Now, Shuri is one of the most interesting characters added to this movie. In the comic books, from a very young age, Shuri always wanted to become the first woman to be the Black Panther. And she does. She becomes the Queen of Wakanda and Black Panther. Now, this is a really important plot line that I think could set up Black Panther 2 or Black Panther 3, similar to the Winter Soldier for Captain America. This is almost a replacement Black Panther. So, when Chadwick Boseman gets tired of playing Black Panther, we could see Latita Wright become the new female Black Panther. Next up is Eric Killmonger, Eric Stevens, played by Michael B. Jordan. Eric Stevens was an American black ops soldier who earned the nickname Killmonger while in the field. However, after disappearing off the grid, he is re-emerged with a plan that threatens to put Black Panther and all of Wakanda at risk. Using his charisma, considerable skills in combat, and his surprising knowledge of Wakanda customs, Eric Killmonger is a dangerous threat to all that T'Challa holds dear. Now, he is the perfect villain 
for this movie. This is Black Panther's Joker. And he's even died and been resurrected into the comic books. So maybe that could be an ongoing theme with the Black Panther movies. They Just like Kenny in South Park, Killmonger dies in every movie. Now, I doubt they're going to do that. I, I think they're going to play it with a more serious tone. But, you know, maybe my joke is correct. Next up is M'Baka, played by Winston Duke. Armed with the hardened Jabari wood armor and the battle staff, Mbaka is the formidable leader of the Jabari tribe, a group of Wakandans who have shunned the use of vibranium and removed themselves from the mainstream Wakandan life. In the wake of T'Chaka's death, Mbaka is faced with the choice of challenging T'Challa for the throne or joining forces with his would-be adversary to defend Wakanda from the malevolent outside forces. Now, Mbaka is not exactly a perfect translation from the comic books. That's because the comic book version of this villain, who first appeared in Avengers number 62 in March 1969, encased himself in white fur and attacked the hero under the moniker Man Ape which I don't think that name would quite work well in a movie, so it's probably a good choice that Marvel decided not to call him that. Finally, the last description is Everett Ross, played by Martin Freeman, a CIA agent and former liaison with the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Everett Ross is reunited with T'Challa when they both find themselves with the same adversary, Ulysses Claw. A skilled tactician with advanced weapons training, Ross becomes an invaluable ally to the Black Panther. Panther. Now, in the comic books, Ross is an expert on Wakanda. He also is an ally to T'Challa, so it will be interesting to see if Ross in the MCU will hold that same role that he does in the comic books. Also, there's a very funny comic book storyline where Ross has to um, make the devil wait for T'Challa, and let's just say that's a very interesting read if you're looking for some weird Black Panther comic books. So there are the comic book bio super friends, and I'm using this video to announce that Black Panther Explained will continue once a week, probably on the exact same day. The schedule is not exactly concrete yet, so please don't kill me. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, and while you're on the channel, check out some of our other awesome videos. Bye-bye!